<laughs> All right. Hey, today we're, uh, we're uh, finishing out this unit. So Monday you have a quiz. We're going to review and quiz Monday. You have a test on Wednesday. So Wednesday. review on Tuesday, test on Wednesday. That's what's coming. This is the last lesson of the unit. So we're learning how to graph exponential equations. Uh, more relearning, if anything. And then we're going to uh, relearn how to solve how to solve log equation and exponent equations. So just a quick review. Um, anything to the power of 0 is automatically what? 1. One. It doesn't matter what is it. It could be pi to the power of 0. It could be a pineapple to the, pi of the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is automatically 1. OK? Anything to the power of 1 is what? No. 3 to the power of 1 is what? 5 to the power of 1 is what? Oh my. You guys are overthinking it. 5 to the power of 1 is 5. 6 to the power of 1 is 6, right? 8 to the power of 1 is 8. Anything to the power of 1 is itself. B. Okay. And then anything to the power of a negative sends it to the bottom of a fraction. So remember that. So b to the power of negative 1 is 1 over b to the power of positive 1. Remember our exponent rules. OK? All right. OK. So if we need to graph this, you can make a table. You can make a table, x, y. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are our typical points that we plug into a table. And then we just plug them in for x. So the y value is found by taking 2 and raising it to the power of whatever x is. So 2 to the power of, let's start with 2 to the power of 0. What's 2 to the power of 0? Yeah, anything to the power of 0 is 1. What's 2 to the power of 1? 2. What is 2 squared? Four. Okay, now what is 2 to the power of negative 1? <coughs> 1 half. 1 over 2, right? Remember that negative exponent sends it to the bottom, right? And then 2 to the power of negative 2, well, that's 1 over 2 squared, which is 4, right? That's 1 over 2 squared. 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth, okay? So that's where I'm getting all those values. And then I can plot those. Negative 2, 1 fourth. Negative 1, 1 half. 0, 1. 1, 2. And then 2, 4. Thank you. All right. So I can see that this is kind of growing. If I started putting in more negatives, negative 3, for example, that would be 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. If I put in negative 4, that's 1 over 2 to the 4th, which is 1 16th. Okay, so on, on the left side, on the left side, over here, this side, we're just getting smaller and smaller. But are we ever going to hit 0? No, it's going to be 1 16th, 1 over 32, 1 over 64, 1 over 128, 1 over 256, 1 over 512, 1 over 1024. It's just tiny, tiny fractions but never actually going to reach zero. So there's an asymptote there right at zero. And then on the right side, this side just keeps doubling. So we're going up really fast. So this is an exponential equation called exponential because x is in the exponent spot. Crazy. Crazy how that works. So that's how you can graph it. You can create a table. And remember, I started with these points, and I just plugged them in to x to find the other points on that table, OK? So this is a parent function. In other words, like this is the home base normal function. And then we can, uh, we can have alterations to that, like 4 to the power of x, OK? So if you don't remember your transformation rules, you can still just rely on a table, x and y, and still your negative two to two points, okay? If you remember your transformation rules, this is uh, 
the, this is the previous graph with a vertical stretch of two, okay? But a lot of people, they, that's just kind of like one of those things they memorize for the test and then they forget. I know none of you would do that. You actually internalize the math and you know everything. But, but other students much like yourselves, your peers in other classes maybe, tend to do that. So if you don't remember those rules, you can still use a table. So plugging in x, 4 to the power of all of these things. 4 to the power of 0. I always start with 0. 4 to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. 4 to the power of 1 is 4. 4 to the power of 2 is 16. Right? 4 squared. 4 to the power of negative 1 is 1 fourth. 4 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 16. Okay, so this is the same kind of shape, it's just much more extreme. So we're already at 4. By the time we get to 1, we're already up at 4. 2 jumps us way off the screen, way up there. Okay, 1 16th, so super, super small. Okay, obviously when I'm grading your graphs, I can't tell whether that dot is really actually 1 16th, okay? So I'm looking right in here. I'm looking at these three dots to know whether you are truly, whether you truly have an accurate graph, all right? So you, you need to make sure these are correct. The other ones I can't really tell on graphs like this, okay? All right, so that is 4 to the power of x. And then uh, same deal here. I would recommend, if you don't remember your transformation rules, to just use a table. Create a table, graph the points. So x, y, negative 2 to 2. So 1 half to the power of 0 is 1. 1, to the power, one half to the power of 1 is 1 half. 1 half squared, what's 1 half times 1 half? 1 half. Let's come off to the side here, 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, so 1 fourth, okay? 1 half to the power of negative 1, that is 2. That is two. Do you know why that's two? Yeah, this, uh, this negative exponent here, so if it's being applied to a fraction, if the fraction is being raised to that negative power, then it flips the inside, like that. See, the inside flips, and that turned the exponent from negative to positive. So it's, it's inversing it, or it's uh, reciprocal. So 1 half to the power of negative 2. Okay, well, so apply that same idea. Flips the inside fraction. Still, and still raised to the power of positive 2 now. 2 squared is 4. So that is 4. So you plot these points here. Negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 2, 0, 0. 1, 1 half, 2, 1 fourth. <clears throat> and we see that this is, this problem is dropping instead of growing. Still never going to reach zero. Still never going to reach zero. Okay. All right. This next example, so th all of this stuff, 1 half to the power of x, that's just the previous graph, this graph, 1 half to the power of x, okay? What is this plus 4 doing? What? Yeah, it's going up 4, up 4. So we can just take this previous graph here.
All right, so we got our previous graph, and then we're just gonna shift all of these things up four. Up four, all of these points are going up four. Up four, up four, up four, up four. Up four, right? So still an exponential, we call this an exponential decay graph. And instead of bottoming out, never reaching zero, look, it's just never reaching four. Okay, never reaching that y value of four. So everything just shifted up four. All right. Be okay with that? All right. So on this one, we are going up two, up two because of the plus two at the end. And then what is this plus one with the x going to do? Hmm? Someone said it. Yeah, left one. Remember. Uh, adding and subtracting causes a shift. When it's with the x, it's left and right. And when it's with the x, it's always opposite. So this is plus, but it's going to send it to the left one. Okay, so uh, if you need, for this part, for this part right here, you can make a table and then shift those points accordingly. So x, y. So hopefully you're picking up on the pattern. 3 to the power of 0 is 1, 3 to the power of 1 is 3, 3 to the power of 2 is 9, 3 to the power of negative 1 is 1 third, 3 to the power of negative 2 is 1 ninth. So all of those points all of those points and then each one of those is being shifted so shift them all left one and up two. Left one, 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 up two. <coughs> so all of those dots from your, from your table got shifted left one and up two. Okay, so you're just shifting. Really, again, if you're not strong with transformations, just rely on the table. Make the table every time, and then shift them according to what the equation says. All right? Okay, we gotta keep moving. I know we're going fast, but we gotta keep moving. We gotta review how to solve equations. So I think we went over this earlier, right? What's my game plan for solving these kinds of equations? Right here, this kind of equation. I have a couple options. Any ideas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2 to the power of 4 gives you 16. So your game plan, though, is not always going to... You, you have to have a plan here because you're not always going to be able to just do this in your head. So your plan number one is get the bases the same. Get the bases the same. So turn 16 into something that has the same base as this side, 2. So I can turn 16 into 2 fourths, or 2 to the power of 4. And now I have the same base. And the reason I do that is so that I can cancel those bases out. When the bases are the same, you can cancel them out. x equals 4. OK? If you can't do that, your other option is convert it to a log equation. That's your other option. Okay. So for all of those, you can get the bases the same. And if you want to look at how to do that, you can go review the 9-3 video or the notes over that. Okay, same with those. All right, here we have a compound interest formula. Have we gone over this before? Yes, we went over this yesterday. So you're just plugging in these variables. They, they have given you the formula here. Time is five years. 1,600 is what? P 
which stands for principal, the starting amount of money, and the rate is 0 0.09, compounded monthly. So if it's compounded monthly, yeah, that's 12, and what variable is that going in for? What? N. N stands for the number of times it's compounding in a year. Number of times it's compounding in a year. So it would be 12 times in a year if it's monthly. So you're plugging all those in and doing that calculation here. Okay. I think we already did this problem as well. Okay. Yeah, we already did those as well. All right, we have not done this before. So I, for time's sake, I'm not gonna jump into this too much, but um, they will give you, we will give you the formula for half-life, okay? And so you're just plugging in your, vari your variables. A form of DDT pesticide has a half-life of approximately 15 years. So this is what you're plugging in for, half-life. If a storage unit has 400 pounds, so this is the amount, find how much DDT is remaining after 72 years. So this is your time, okay? So I don't remember exactly what the formula is. I'd have to look it up because this is kind of a, you do it once and then you never see it again kind of problem. So, But it's really not any different than the ones above. You just plug your variables into the formula, okay? Don't get thrown off by this half-life business, okay? Stick to the formula, all right? Okay.